Hey friend, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, let's talk all things plugins. Things like where do plugins live on your Mac system in case you need to dig into that folder to remove a couple plugins or just suss out any problems. How to organize your plugin collection within Logic using the plugin manager. Whether you wanna rearrange all the folders, whether you wanna hide certain plugins because you don't use them. And also a couple tips for when plugins aren't playing well with Logic. Maybe Logic can't validate those plugins. Maybe it can't even see those plugins or it's trying to scan them over and over. But the bulk of today's video is focused on Logic's plugin manager. So first things first, where the heck do your plugins live on your Mac? This particular detail is becoming less and less of an important issue because many plugin developers these days have created their own apps for managing your plugin licenses, for installing your plugins, uninstalling your plugins. In fact, I have Isotope's product portal open right here. And right from within the single app, we can install different plugins. We can uninstall plugins. We can try out different plugins and even download the free plugins right from within the single installer. Really, really helpful. Waves has its own called Wave Central. Plugin Alliance has its own. You know, there's a lot of them floating around now, but that's not to say that there won't be a plugin sometime in the future where you yourself will have to place it in the correct folder on your Mac system. And to navigate to that folder, let's just select the finder. Even though the finder is not open necessarily, it's still in focus. As we can see right up here in the taskbar, I'm gonna to go to go, hold option, and click on the library icon that appears when I hold option. And this is the user library. This is actually not the place that you want to place plugins on your system, but this is an important point, which is why we're focusing first on this. As you can see, we're Mac system, user folder, my user folder, library, and under audio, we go into plugins, and then we have components. And this particular detail seems to trip up a lot of users. Logic Pro does not use VSTs. It uses components, otherwise known as audio unit plugins. And in this particular components folder, there are no plugins because the plugins actually need to go in a completely different components folder. But sometimes plugins can end up in this folder under the user account, and you might have to move them to the more appropriate place, which is under your Mac system, to the library folder that's global to the system. Under audio, once again, plugins, components, and right here, you can see all of the plugins that I own and don't use. It's actually kind of hard to look in this folder sometimes. But as you can see, all of the plugins have the suffix component because they're components. Some have folders that have some contents attached to them. And this is where your plugins are installed. And once in a while, it's good to take a look in this folder just to see if there's any plugins floating around that you don't use, you're not interested in using anymore, and maybe getting rid of. And that's as simple as right-clicking on one of these plugins and moving it to the trash. And Logic will know that that plugin is no longer available for use. Perfect. So once again, it's under your Mac system, library, audio, plugins, components, and here are all the plugins that Logic will be using on your system. Fairly regularly, I'll have users ask me, hey, Chris, you know, I'm moving my projects onto an external hard drive. I'm moving the sound libraries onto an external hard drive. Should I also move my plugins on there as well? And the quick answer is absolutely not. Plugins need to live on the same hard drive that your Mac OS lives on because this is the folder where Logic is gonna look for your plugins. If you move them all out of the components folder or if you move the components folder elsewhere, Logic won't know where that folder is. Your plugins won't appear in Logic and you're gonna be pretty sour about that fact. You'll be wondering what the heck is going on. So just leave them as is, don't move your plugins. They really don't take up that much space as compared to Logic projects and sound library content. Cool, now that we have that out of the way, let's dig into Logic's plugin manager because that to me is really the important piece. You know, you're downloading your plugins and if you navigate to the audio effects on a channel strip and dig into the audio units subsection, you know, some of these plugin folders can get quite big. I purposefully have kept mine very small, but you know, if you have some of the universal audio plugins, you'll know that that folder, you know, got a hundred plus plugins living in it because universal audio forces you to download all of the plugins, even if you don't have licenses for most of them. So instead of you having to navigate through a hundred plugins just to find that one or 10 that you own and actually use, we can rearrange and organize our plugins using Logic's plugin manager. Let's do it right now. Let's go up to Logic Pro. Preferences, Plugin Manager. 
And just like that, the plugin manager is presented to us. Let's go to show all right in the top left-hand corner here. And we have so much information available to us, so much we can do for organizing and validating. The interface of the plugin manager is broken up into three areas. The upper left-hand corner are the categories that we're all familiar with, you know, amps and pedals, delay. These are all the folders that house Logic's native plugins. In the bottom left-hand corner, we have manufacturer, which would be found in the audio unit subsection of the audio effects. And right over here in the main section is every plugin that we own. At the moment, we're showing all of our plugins. So you can see there's a lot of plugins here, many of which I'm not using, but you know, we can select a specific category such as EQ and we'll only see the plugins of that particular category. Or if we click on a manufacturer, we'll only see that manufacturer's plugins. You know, I'm thinking I want to create a new category called saturation, and I want to add a couple of third-party plugins to that saturation folder. So instead of diving into audio units manufacturer, I can just dive into that folder right in the mix of all the normal categories. So let's go to this plus symbol right in the category section. Let's call it saturation. And you can see that this folder has been automatically alphabetized for me, but perhaps I don't want it where Logic has placed it. Well, we can just click hold and drag. And now we've placed our category at the bottom of the list. Let's now navigate to the sound toys folder. I'm thinking I want decapitator. And all I have to do is click, hold and drag decapitator to my preferred folder. So we can drag it to saturation, but I can also drag it right into distortion. One of the stock categories that logic provides us. We click right on distortion. We can see all of the logic distortion plugins plus decapitator. And under saturation, once again, Decapitator. And in fact, let me just enable Decapitator by clicking on the little checkbox under Use so we can view Decapitator in Logic's audio effects. Go down here to Done. Now let's go open the audio effects section. And under Distortion, we now have Decapitator that we can load, or we can go under Saturation, Decapitator as well. And we can load it right up from there, perfect. And of course, we can always navigate to the manufacturer under sound toys, and there it is. Perfect, I wanna continue adding plugins to the saturation folder. So maybe I'll go to Klanghelm, and I have their saturation plugin. Let's go look for Sonics, bring in the inflator. Awesome, and let's now move saturation to the top so you can see that you can move these folders around as you see fit. So once again, we have to close the plugin manager each and every time we want to open the audio effects. So let's open this up. Saturation's at the top now. We can see Decapitator and the Inflator, but we're not seeing that Klanghelm plugin that I also added to the saturation folder. So let's once again, bring that into view. Plugin manager under saturation and right over here under use, Let's enable it. And let's take a look. There it is. Awesome. We can also create nested folders as well within the categories. As you probably know, the Logic EQ folder also houses the Vintage EQ collection as well. If we just navigate to the audio effects, go down to EQ, Vintage EQ collection, and that's a category within the EQ category. To do this ourselves, let's just create a new category and we'll call it saturation. We're going to add a colon and then we'll call this second category. All right, and let's now add a plugin. So I'll go to plugin mix and I'll pick their analogger plugin, drag it in. Let's close this up, take a look. Under saturation, second category, analogger. As you're probably putting together, you can get as creative as you want with categorizing your plugins and having them exactly the way that you want them instead of just the default that Logic provides. And one of those ways to get creative is to hide or remove plugins. You know, I've created the second category. I have the main saturation folder. And as you saw, many of my plugins are actually not available to me because I don't really use them. If we go right over here and deselect the use for this Klanghelm plugin, it's gonna point out that the Klanghelm plugin never disappears from our project. It's still there, we can still use it. But if we now go into the drop-down folder, it's no longer available to us in our custom folder. 
And if we go to the audio units, that Klanghelm folder is not there as well. So we can't go reaching for it, which means we can clean up our plugin folders if we have too many plugins that we don't really use, but it will have no impact on our projects. Our plugins aren't gonna disappear from our projects unless we actually delete them from our Mac system. Logic plugins that come with Logic, you cannot turn off the use, which means they'll always generally be visible. But if you right click on a Logic plugin, you can actually remove it. So let's go to, you know, something like the EQ. Let's look at the single band EQ, right click and remove it. And this plugin hasn't been removed from our system entirely. If we go into Logic here, we can search for the single band EQ. It's still there. It's just no longer in the EQ folder. Clean that up. And we can even remove the second category that we created or even one of Logic's default categories as well. So check it out. If we click done, go right here. We no longer have the utility category and under EQ, we no longer have the single band EQ. I've actually found through the years that I don't really like customizing the view of the audio effects. So I'm just gonna go right up here to restore default settings. Logic's gonna give me a little notification here and I'm gonna restore. I'm gonna set everything back exactly how it was. So I don't have my saturation folder anymore. The utility folder is back. Under EQ, we have the single band EQ once again in that category. Now digging into when plugins don't wanna play well with your system, the plugin manager is a great way to figure out what exactly is going on. Let's say you've downloaded a plugin, you have the license, but Logic is just you know, not seeing it. It's not available in the audio effects over here. And you just don't know what to do. Like what's the deal? Well, step one is always to try restarting your Mac. Oftentimes that can be the solution that you need. Just you know, restart your Mac. Logic will probably rescan the components folder and find that plugin and you're good to go. But in the event that it's not that simple, well, let's try resetting and rescanning certain plugins. Under this particular manufacturer, most of my plugins are validated. You know this by looking at the compatibility. It's available for me to use, but some of these plugins have not been validated as are indicated that there is some sort of internal issue. Now I could just enable these plugins for use. So right here, we have Acon Digital's Dynamics. I've enabled it. If I close this, and navigate to the audio effects, you can go down to audio units. And sometimes you'll see a folder at the top here that just says incompatible, which are plugins that have not been validated, but Logic will still allow you to open. I don't recommend doing this because there's a reason that that plugin was not validated by Logic. There's probably a problem, but in this case, I don't have that category called incompatible. So instead, let's go to Vitalize here. And I'm gonna go down to reset and rescan selection. And what this is gonna do is Logic is going to try to revalidate the plugin. And if it can, it will make it available for use. Once I clicked the reset and rescan selection, a pop-up occurs and it goes through the validation process. And thankfully Logic was able to pass or validate this plugin. It's noted in the pop-up. We can close that. We can see now that's available for use. If we go right into Acon Digital's folder here, it turns out that Vitalize, even though validated, is still not appearing in the audio effects dropdown, which means I need to restart my Mac. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'll see you in a moment. Okay, we're back. I've gone ahead and restarted my Mac. If we take a look under the audio effects now, right here, we can see that Vitalize has been introduced finally to the plugin folder, along with the Dynamics plugin that we tried to enable. They were both successfully validated, restarted, everything was good. But maybe in your particular situation, restarting your Mac doesn't help. Maybe resetting and rescanning the plugins doesn't help, which means that there could be a problem with the plugin or the license for the plugin. You may have to reach out to the developer, but I would also recommend taking a look at some of these installer apps to see if there's something in the settings that can maybe help you get things sorted out for your plugins. For example, right here in Wave Central, in the settings, there are a variety of options for cleaning up Waves plugins, for fixing permissions and ownership. In fact, just for the last couple of days, Logic kept insisting on scanning the same four Waves plugins over and over again. Not a big deal, but you know, a little annoying. So what I did was I went into Wave Central, you know, I clicked on the repair. I went through the process of repairing and reinstalling my Waves plugins. I went through the cleanup process. I even fixed permissions and ownership. And doing all this solved the problem for me. My Waves plugins loaded in Logic. Logic didn't have to rescan every time I opened it. I was good to go. I'm not saying that every developer's app has options for cleanup and repair, 
but it's worth looking into. Otherwise, you'll have to reach out to the developer and ask them, hey, why isn't your plugin loading in Logic? So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Per Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicperrules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.